We're going to talk about tomatoes today. We're going to go from saving seeds to these beautiful tomato plants. Hello, good morning. This is Eva Go Go Mama at Highland Homestead. We have a collaboration from north to south. I am here in western New York. Zone 5A slash B because I never know what the weather's gonna be like here on this hill side here. We also have Dave with Organic Gardening in North Carolina. And we also have Dan from Permaculture Forest in Florida. Tomatoes. Up here, we have a lot of problems with blight on our tomato plants. These tomato plants, a lot of times here on the hill, it gets really rainy, we have a lot of storms, and people have problems with the blight. One thing that I do is I take and I cut off all the leaves on the bottom of the branches. As they grow, I can <clears throat> stop the plant from falling by putting it up with my handy dandy zip strips. But in the meantime, I have come up with kind of a solution for this year, and it is an experiment. I have saved my seeds from my Jumbo Roma tomatoes last year. I have put my seeds in a half pint container with water from last year's plants, tomato plants. Soaked it a little bit, put it through a strainer, put it on some paper towel, let it dry, and I used these seeds this year for my tomato plants because they did so well with controlling the blight from last year here. And what I wanted you to see, we, we already have, I already have tomatoes on here. What I wanted you to see is the beautiful tomato plants that are growing here all the way down and I still have to take care of these. We've had a lot of rain here. It's been non-stop rain. And I will take and I will clip the bottoms of these plants and hang the tops of the plants and secure them for this year. Tomatoes are really important here because all the plants die from the blight. From year to year, we never know what's gonna happen with our tomatoes. So if I can produce a tomato plant that is hardy to our area, then we won't have the problems like we have in the, had in the past, which is absolutely fantastic for this garden, and I can keep growing. But I'm gonna throw you over to Dave in North Carolina. Down to you, Dave. Thanks for that, Eva. That was awesome. And I can't wait to see what Dan's going to come up with for his garden in Florida. Welcome to our East Coast Gardening Collaboration. People that follow me, I hope you'll go ahead and check out these two other channels. Links to their channels are down below in the description. Today, I'm going to give you a quick tip on planting squash, cucumbers, melons, and then I'm going to go to the garden and show you two volunteer plants. So let's get down to the garden and get going. Okay guys, my tip for growing some great squash and cucumbers, cantaloupes, watermelon, pumpkins, whatever, is to incorporate a lot of compost into your planting area. A lot of times people will make a mound for doing these crops because they are heavy feeders. So when you make a mound, you can incorporate a lot of good stuff like this compost into your mound so that you have really great soil and also you make sure that you have soil that's going to drain real well 
So let me show you some squash that I just planted. I got these seeds from Dan, who you'll meet in just a little bit. So yeah, here's some squash. I just planted these probably less than a week ago, and they are going crazy. Look how they sprouted. So I did incorporate a bunch of compost into this area, and then I also got the bedding from the bunny cage and put a lot of that bedding down in here, so I got some awesome soil underneath and I got some good mulching cover with a lot of nutrition in there too so every time it rains every time this gets watered it's going to put more nutrition down in here they're looking super super healthy so I'm looking forward to see what those squash turn into all right so let's look at two volunteers in my garden it's amazing how volunteers are sometimes the most healthy and the most vigorous plants oh there's a volunteer here too but I wasn't going to show that one I plant trombone seno squash, but this year I have one right here. This vine is actually where I planted my cucumbers. And the cucumbers are doing well, but this trombone seno vine came out and I said, I don't think that's a cucumber, but I let it grow. So look at that trombone seno vine. That trombone seno squash was way up there but it actually looks like it pulled this uh pulled this pecan tree branch down and the vine is still going way up there you can see it way up there in the pecan tree it's just going crazy so it's also going over this way and it's got some baby trombones you know on it there too the baby trombones you know there okay so here's my other volunteer plant that i wanted to show you guys this is a pumpkin plant and it's starting way over there and it's going up that way coming back here going up this way past my blueberry bush and it's out in the yard and i don't grow pumpkins because i've got a small garden and i really don't have room for it so these seeds must have been in the compost pile probably the same as my tromboncina were in the compost pile and uh they didn't compost and get killed, so here they are. So take a peek under here. Look at that. Got a beautiful little pumpkin going. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it go. Even though I don't have room, but it is over here on the far side of the garden, so I'm gonna go ahead and let it go. Okay, we're gonna hand off to Dan and see what he's got going on in July in Florida. Thanks for watching guys and make sure that you check out these other two channels in the links in the description so that you can get to know these gardeners on the East Coast as well. See you again real soon. Hey YouTube family, what's going on? All right, in this video, it's a East Coast collaboration with uh, organic uh, garden in North Carolina and uh, Highland Highland Homestead. You know, we're all are on the East Coast and we are doing this collaboration just to show you guys the different, you know, what grows different in different zone this time of the year, the, the month of J July. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys a perennial leafy green that we could actually grow here. There's not much leafy greens we could grow in, in the south, which is Florida. I'm in zone 9B. You know, because of the, the heat and you know a lot of you know leafy greens and the northern type leafy greens definitely can grow here this time of the year it's going to bolt it's going to get infested with a lot of bugs and all you know all the other you know stuff that comes with the summer so but in in this video i'm going to be showing you a perennial leafy green that could grow right through the year it, it could grow as an indoor plant and it could actually grow outdoor all right and that leafy green is longevity spinach you know so let me show you guys what longevity spinach looks like all right guys so this is longevity spinach as you see there does have it growing on the ground it makes a perfect ground cover pack of nutrients you know you could just pop a leaf off like this you know and just eat it right away extremely good you could juice it as well 
All right, let me just give you a quick rundown on longevity spinach. Longevity spinach is a perennial leafy green. Uh, the spinach, you know, was is originated in what South Asia, Africa, you know, and it's been they've been using leaf growing leafy greens like this for centuries. It's gaining popularity you now in the U.S., which I'm really happy about. Because we are so, you know, a lot of us want to just stick to the stuff that we are familiar with. But there's so much other leafy greens packed with so much nutrients that we haven't really explored. And this is one of them you guys can actually go and explore. Longevity spinach. It, yeah, it grows well in either shade, full sun, you know, or semi-shade. You know, it, to me, it tends to grow better in shaded areas. You know? The plant generates a large root system during the, the spring and then it pushes this big growth during the summertime. You know? One of the cool things about this perennial leafy green is it's one of the simplest you know, leafy greens to grow. All I gotta do look is look, cut, cut, I'll show you guys. This is it. And I could just come over. Let's find a container here. And just stick it in, in the container. That's it. And it's gonna grow. Now the thing is to keep, keep it moist for a few days. And that's how simple longevity spinach is actually gonna grow. Yep. Guys, I use this spinach. I juice the spinach on a regular. In the mornings, I come at this color piece, drop in my juicer, you know, and it gives the, 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 like an apple. If you juice like apple, you know, cucumber, and some of the longevity spinach, it gives it such an amazing flavor. All right? So I hope you all found, found this information useful. You know, you could also, let me t mention this thing, you could grow this indoor. So if you live in, Upstate, if you're living in a colder temperature, you could get a cut in and you could just grow this as an indoor plant and have food indoor. And when it becomes the summertime, you bring that same container outside, give it that full sun or semi sun, and it's gonna grow extremely good. All right, so thank you so, for, thank you so much for watching.